You got no way to hold them, no way to fold them, no way to walk away, no way to run. You never can show the money when you're sitting at the table. Big time enough for counting heads when the feeling is done. Hell, it began to know the secret to surviving. Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to play The Gambler. So this is a song uh, I think most well-known by Kenny Rogers. Um, it's a great, great fun song to play. It only needs three chords, so thanks to all of you who requested this. Uh, I hope you enjoy this lesson. So uh, before we get to it, as always, check out the website, playsongnotes.com. You can find the notes in the tabs and the link to that PDF that I made for this one, as well as my other lessons, right? It's a great resource to help you practice a song outside of these videos. So check that out. But with that said, let's get right into this lesson and just do the thing. Okay, so I want to start this lesson off by talking about um, capo and all that sort of stuff. If you want to play along with Kenny Rogers version, you need to put a capo on the first fret. Okay, and you're going to be using the chords of D, G, and A. Now, I'm going to be using the same chords, but have no capo. That just makes it easier for you out there to follow along if you don't have a capo especially. Just note that though, you need a capo if you want to play along with Kenny Rogers. And later in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the second half of this song when the whole song modulates, it changes key. Okay, I'll talk about that. So, uh, you know, just, just keep an eye out for that if you're interested in that sort of thing. But with that said, let's get into this, right? So chord wise, um, you're going to need three chords for this song. Pretty straightforward, right? A nice three chord country song. So um, those chords are the D chord, D major. Okay, thinnest four strings. Then you'll need a G chord, okay? Now, you can play it however you like. There's a few different options, right? You can play the third, second, open, open, third, third. Um, you can leave your ring finger off if you want, right? Or you could sort of use this sort of voicing where you, maybe your ring finger is on the sixth string. Whether you do it like this or you do it like this, it's totally up to you. I think whatever is more comfortable, you can go with that one, all right? And then there's the A chord. A major is the thinnest five strings. Open, second, 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 open. All right, now I often will use an A7 chord in this song, which is basically, it's an easier version of A as far as I'm concerned. It's open, second, open, second, open, okay? It's basically the A major chord, but that middle note on the second fret is just not being pressed down. Okay, it adds a bit of uh, tension that resolves nicely when you go back to the D, okay? The A7 and the D, right? So you're landing. It sounds nice and uh, sounds nice and good, like a nice conclusion to that. So those are basically the chords you're gonna need. Again, in the back half of the song, I'll show you how to use the E, uh, E major chords, but those are gonna be coming, so keep an eye out for that. Now, with the chords you have, let's talk about the timing and how you sort of change the chords here. Now, um, you know, here's what it looks like if you were to basically put the chords on top of the lyrics, right? So you, you could just, you know, sing it, talk it through at your own pace, and wherever you see a chord here, you do a single strum. That would technically work, but it kind of might not be a song in the same way where you're not having a nice constant rhythm. So if we were to bring in the rhythm, we're gonna have four counts per measure, okay? And the way to think about the chord progression might be like this. Well, let's get rid of the lyrics for a second, and let's just understand that this pattern of chord changes is what you're gonna use. Now, um, what is happening here is you're gonna be reading from left to right, and then you go from the top line to the bottom line. It's just like you're reading a book, okay? Um, you know, you're reading words in, on, on a line here. Whenever you see a, a, a chord, like a D or G and A, what that means is you're gonna do four counts of that chord, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's gonna be our sort of rhythm. And the quick other note is whenever you see a slash like this, what that means is to repeat the prior chord, right? So for example, uh, the verse, I'm gonna play uh, for each chord or each slash, I'm just gonna play one strum, okay, and I'll count out loud. Just to give you an idea, and I'll sort of uh, put the melody into my sort of counting to give you an idea of how that maps to the song, all right? So, uh, get it ready to start. One, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. Okay, then go to the next line. D two three four D two three four G two three four D two three four G two three four D two three four A two three four D. Okay, so that's basically the progression we're going to use for the verse. 
And if you look at it, you, you kind of notice that you're always starting on D, and then you're just going to be basically going from D to G to D to G to D to G. You kind of stay on different chords uh, for a different length sometimes, right? But what the real difference of those two lines is that on the first line of the verse, you're going to end on the A chord, right? And the second line of the verse, um, you're basically going to go from A and then end on a D. So just kind of keep that in mind um, as you're going through things. And I'm teaching you this because, again, the lyrics change throughout each verse, but this one progression will stay constant. And if you memorize this progression, uh, you'll be in good shape for all the verses. Okay, so next up, let's look at the chorus. It's very, very, very similar. It's almost identical. I think you're just going to go to G one extra time here in the, um, in the first line of the chorus, right? So you got a D two three four D two three four G two three four D two three four G two three four D two three four D two three four A D two three four D two three four D G two three four, right? To G, D, 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 and A, then to D. Okay, so that's basically the timing, right? It's four counts per each of these uh, chords, and then uh, you'll be in good shape. Now we're gonna get to strumming next, but I just wanna make sure you understand this progression here because we'll sort of be referring to this as we learn the strumming patterns here. Okay, now for the strumming of this song. Uh, there's a bunch of strumming patterns you can use. I'm gonna start off super simple, and I'll eat with each step I take, I'm gonna make it a little bit more full, right? And it lets you basically um, take the song in a nice uh, approach as far as you can tune it down or you can tune it up as far as the sort of the impact you wanna have. And you really wanna get a nice build up and a nice swell when you're going through the verses so that when you get to the chorus, it really, it really works out. So basically the first strumming pattern I would show you is kind of what I just did show you in the progressions there, where you're just doing a single down strum for each four count. And this almost really isn't even a pattern. It's just kind of just, you know, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, right? Know when to walk away and know when to run. It at a count, show me. Right, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but let's look at this one here where it gets a little bit more interesting. And here what we're gonna do is basically go on, going to do a, play the bass note of each chord on the one count. And then on the three count, we're gonna strum the rest of the chord. Okay, so if it's a D, that would look like this. If I just stay on D, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Okay, the G would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the A or the A7 would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and if you were to put all that together and do the chorus, it would be you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting, yeah, when the dealing's done. Okay, you kind of noticed my counting got a little bit off there. I was uh, rushing it, right? It's, it's okay. If you, if you really want to be, uh, put up a good practice session for yourself, want to put a, metronome on, put a metronome on, or put the song on, and basically try to strum in time. Now, the next strumming pattern I would say is to take what I just showed you, but compress it, like double up the times. So instead of doing a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, let's do a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Same thing, right? With the A. One, two, three, four. All right, so it makes it nice and uh, it kind of picks the pace a little bit, right? You gotta know when to hold on. Know when to fold. So that's a nice one you can do there. And then the next one I would say, which is a bit more full, is basically to do a down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And the one catch with this is that on the first down strum, you want to pluck just the bass note of that chord, right? So for D, it would be one, two, three, and four, and 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 the G would be 
One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and... And then the A would be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and... One, two, three, and, four and okay? Take it nice and slow, and if you want to get the pattern down, if you're having trouble with the pattern, just kind of lightly touch your hand on the strings here, and just do a... Right? One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and... You really want to do that to get your strumming hand nice and comfortable with this before you have to worry about um, switching the chords. And if, you have, if you're having trouble, too, playing just the bass note of uh, each chord... Right? It is a bit tricky because you have to be a little bit precise. You can just, don't worry about the bass note and just strum the whole chord, right? So down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And you'll notice here, lastly, that I have these little um, accents on the two and the four count in this tab. What that means is that those are the counts, if you can, you want to give a little bit more en uh, emphasis and accent to it, right? Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. And it creates a nice, uh, like, backbeat, right, so to speak. Um, so those are the strumming patterns you'll have. Now, you'll basically use those for the full song. Now, um, here's a, one other trick you can do is basically, no matter what chord you're playing, whether it's the D, the G, or the A, you can add alternating bass notes. And that's especially for these strums where you're going to be going fucking just the bass note and then the rest of the chord, right? So instead of doing this... You can do this, right? Watch. Basically going from the fourth string to the fifth string on the one and the three counts. And on the two and the four, I'm just strumming the whole chords, right? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For the G, it usually sounds good to go from the sixth to the fifth or the sixth to the fourth and do the full strum in between. Right, here's six to the fifth. And you could hammer it on to get a little bit more advanced. A little bit more advanced, and then the A, uh, fifth either to fourth or fifth to sixth, right? So let's do fifth to fourth. Or you could do fifth to sixth. All right, so uh, we're in good shape there. And then um, I'll say that another uh, part of this song that's really important is when we change from the um, in the second half of the song, we, we change keys, right? So what's happening again is that if Kenny, Rogers, uh, if Kenny Rogers' version is what you're playing along with, what you would do for that is start with a capo in the first fret. In the whole first part of the song, you use D, G, and A, like I told you. Now what he does is in the second part of the song, he's, he's like, it's like he's changing his capo to the second fret, and he stays on D, G, and A, right? But that kind of changes the whole, um, the, the whole pitch of everything up a half step. What I like to do instead of worrying about a capo, is I change from, instead of doing D, G, and A, I like to change to E, A, and B7. And let me show you how to play these chords here, because you'll need to know this. The E chord is basically open, second, second, first, open, open. Okay? Um, then you'll need an A chord, which we already looked at. Then there's a B7 chord, so that's the thinnest five strings, second, first, second, okay? Open second string and then second fret on the first string. Okay, and then we're basically going to use the same um, progression. We just change all the D's become E's, all the G's become A's, and all the A's become B7s, right? And that's really important that you make sure you map all those over. And then basically, um, you know, that would sound like this. On a warm summer's Eve. On a train bound for nowhere Met up with the gambler We were both too tired to sleep So we took turns of staring At the window at the darkness Boredom overtook us And 
he began to speak. He said, son, I need my life. And reading people's faces, knowing what their cards were, by the way they held their eyes. If you don't mind me saying, you see your out of faces, boy, taste of your whiskey. I'll give you some advice. Though I handed him my bottle, and I drank down my last swallow. Then he bummed a cigarette, then he asked me for a light. And the night got deadly quiet, and his face lost all expression. You're gonna play the game, boy. You gotta learn to play it right. You gotta know when to hold on, know when to fold on, know when to walk away, and know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. It's time enough for counting hey, when the deal is done. And every gamble knows the secret to surviving, knowing what to throw away and knowing what to keep. Cause every hand's a winner, and every hand's a loser. The best that you can hope for is to die. Turned out to the window, crushed out his cigarette and faded off to sleep. And somewhere in the darkness, the gambler he broke even. And in his final words, I found an ace that I couldn't keep. You gotta know when to hold on, know when to fold on, know when to walk away. Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting hey, when the deal is done. Alright, so with that, I think you have everything you need to play this song. Now, if you want to get a little bit more tricky with some of the fills and everything you can do, as far as, you know, doing... I did a whole entirely a separate lesson. Look for that in the comments or description of this video. It's a nice way to sort of improvise around the melody and chords of this song. But I hope this was a nice sort of simple foot and uh, toe in the water to get you started with this song. And um, I hope you have fun with it. So let me know how it works for you. Uh, thank you all for watching this far in the video. And uh, thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon, through the tip jar, or with the kind emails and comments you all write. I really appreciate it and uh, know that it, it definitely... Um, uh, it means a lot to me. So I, I thank you and uh, I wish you well. Good, best of luck with this song. Let me know what other songs you want to hear lessons for. And in the meantime, my friends, uh, take care, pick up that guitar, and play. Bye-bye.